Neha and welcome to Euclid's channel. So everybody who is watching us right now, let me introduce myself. If you do not know me or you are new to the channel, uh, my name is Gunjan and I am Euclid's founder. Now you would be thinking what are these two ladies doing here and what are they going to talk about? So let me just give you a brief introduction. As a woman in business, I have always felt that, you know, we do not have enough mentors. We don't find right information very easily. You know, it's always a little too hard for women to do well, given the circumstances that we live with. And being a mom adds, just adds to it. And you know what, whatever has uh, you know, COVID taught us, one thing is for sure that it has taught us that how it is, how important it is that your money makes money for you, right? Whether or not you're working, whether or not you have a job, but it is very, very important that your money grows with you. So that's the reason why we are here. I want to reach out to every woman out there, whether a house homemaker or a businesswoman or a corporate person or self-employed, anybody who wants to, you know, reach out, seek help, to, uh, get mentorship have a lot of questions regarding growing wealth. This is the series that we are trying to, you know, answer and debunk a lot of myths around investments and in, about wealth management. So in this series, what we are going to do, it is a three-part series. First is about wealth management. Second is about taxation and uh, everything around, you know, setting up a business, legalities, etc., in the country. And third is about... Uh, running the business or franchising is an option to, you know, uh, create wealth, investment in a business, creating wealth or running a business. All of those questions will be answered in the third part of the series, which will be hosted by me. So the first part, which is about wealth management, here we have Neha Sapra from Credence Wealth Management. So she runs, she's the founder, she's a mommy, and she's a super entrepreneur and she runs this company called Credence Wealth Management. Welcome Neha and I will give the floor to you to introduce yourself to our uh, viewers right now. So thanks a lot Gunjan for providing this platform and starting this informative series. I am sure a lot of women out there are going to thank you. Uh, whether it is a you know housewife, working woman, businesswoman, pilot, professional, doctor. I think all of them is going to thank you. Um, uh, just to you know, uh, give a brief uh, number on it, uh, financial literacy rate anyways for males and females is very, very low in India. And for females, it is like all the more low. Just to, you know, before beginning, uh, what we should do uh, in a simplified manner, uh, just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I come from a business family wherein, uh, you know, I have seen my parents working hard uh, to make sure all our wants and needs are taken care of. Uh, I have a loving husband who's an interior designer. I have a lovely, beautiful daughter, Jaina, uh, who's 11 years old. I am a co-founder of Credence Investments. And at Credence Investments, we run a financial awareness initiative program known as Sahi Nivesh Zaruri Hai. And under this uh, awareness program, I have a, taken a mission to make sure that, you know, by 2030, I should make 1 lakh people financial literate. So that's the target I've taken for myself. Wow, uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 2020 post pandemic, I think a lot of things and perspective have changed and things are you know, no different for wealth management also. So post pandemic, I think if I talk about the basic framework for any woman to plan her finances First and most important thing is she should start participating, which is not happening. You know, participate in financial planning discussions around yourself. Don't uh, sit like a spectator. So that is most important. Once you will start participating, then, you know, it is the time to create that basic framework. To create that basic framework, uh, first of all, I should have a cash flow system wherein uh, I should do a little bit of budgeting. And to do that, you know, a simple 50, 30, 20 rule can, you know, we can start with this rule wherein 50% of my money is going to my wants, 30% is going to needs and 20% is going to savings. So 
start small but start saving so 20% is a good rate to start savings then once this budgeting is taken care of second most important thing is emergency fund especially post pandemic there was a report i was reading that number one financial regret for all the americans today is they don't have a financial they don't have emergency fund so pre pandemic the definition was you know you should have six months of your living expenses as a you know emergency fund but post pandemic things have changed i should always keep one year of living expenses as an emergency fund so i can keep this money as a cash i can keep this in bank fds or debt mutual funds whatever i am most comfortable with third again attend all your meetings with your financial advisor or a professional whosoever is this uh, with your family associated fourth make sure your medical insurance is in place so uh, again it's a point yeah it's the biggest learning uh, you know post pandemic lot of us have been in a situation where we have to pay you know big huge bills of hospitals and we were not covered so medical insurance should be in place and last uh, you know keep record of all the sources of income and assets you know whether it is a bank account whether it is insurance policy list of passwords everything should you should have a record of everything interesting very very interesting like a, a good fundamental you know covered there that you know how you need to start what first you need to get into the mindset you need to start thinking about it and then you know what's what's how you need to set the basics right so my first um question is that how uh, should somebody who's who has zero literacy you know start should they you know start reading online or should they start uh, you know educate it it's self education or should they directly start reaching out to you know firms who are you know experts in typically we have seen that uh, any uh, family has has a ca from ages ages like ca firms that are associated with any family from ages they've been doing the tax filing or they are bankers right there are mm-hmm. bankers who are uh, Uh, who reach out to you from time to time uh, whoever is managing whether it's an icici bank or an sgfc the the personal bankers you reach out to you from time to time with certain schemes and then there is the lic you know uh, people who again right. uh, so these have been typical uh, channels of investment that a, a typical family has been doing over the years and that's what we have commonly seen in our families right there is an lic agent there is a banker and as a ca right so right. tell me how do you uh, you know break this or or how do you uh, what message do you have for people who is the right person to choose when you're starting your investment journey or when you're starting your wealth management journey so uh, you know uh... typically if i have to answer this question for female fraternity uh, because since we are talking about women today i think uh, since childhood uh, you know females and males they are wired in a certain manner in our families though things are changing but not so rapidly as we think uh, you know we keep uh, telling our sons you know you have to kind of look after your parents expenses you know uh, when they'll reach certain age they'll be involved in you know family financial decisions also on the other hand daughters you know they've been brought up believing that you know uh, they have to be a great cook manage households they should not be aggressive you know we might not involve them in financial matter or we won't you know kind of uh, think they are good enough to give us opinion around financial matters so you know when it comes to women uh, talking on financial matters you know they because of such environment around they never had required confidence of managing their money on their exactly. own exactly and that's or, exactly why i ask you this that where yeah. you start like you feel lost because you know uh, 20 years 25 years they've lived their life with a certain mindset which has kind of uh inculcate this quite hard inside their mind that we are not good enough to you know uh give our opinions around financial matter that is one second i think uh second road block is we always have this mindset that we'll be judged if i am kind we have that fear of being judged if i'm talking about finances if you know if i'm asking my father 
हमारी कितनी प्रॉपर्टीज है यू नो वॉट इज बट इफ सन इज आस्किंग सेम क्वेश्चन इट इज ओके एब्सोल्यूटली फाइन आई मीन आई आई थिंक बियॉन्ड दैट ऑल्सो इन बिजनेस यू नो वेर यू इन्वेस्ट योर मनी Uh, yes beyond, you know fds and lls Absolutely. what do you do with your money how do you grow your money all of those questions go on un- unanswered completely or yeah. have not never been an open topic of discussion in fact you know unanswered is a second stage at one go they a female will be scared of asking these questions Absolutely. because yeah. she will think in her mind you know am i being money minded you know what kind of stupid questions i'm asking my parents but on the other hand same questions if a son is asking they are completely accepted so you know this is the kind of struggle we been living with which we are not even aware of you know till the time we are reaching certain age so we need uh, we need to first of all get out of that mindset that uh, you know this is most important thing that it is okay to ask questions around finance we have to get this fear out of us that we'll be judged we should not ask you know what my brother is going to think what my father is going to think what my husband or my father in law you know the hundreds of questions before even asking so we need to get all those out of our mind without hesitation we have to prepare ourselves first of all that yes i have to make myself financial literate that is the step one second step is because post pandemic you know things have been uh, kind of the speed has increased 10 times of digitization you know things which might you you know we were thinking it might take 10 years they have hap- you know we've seen things happening in 18 months or 24 uh, months kind of time so lot of data is available on internet so you have to start from somewhere i i don't say that you know google aapko sari jankari deta hai sahi jankari deta hai i cannot say that that you have to decide for yourself after looking at 100 videos because if i suddenly start reading a book of 100 pages i might i might get lost absolutely you know yeah. uh, start reading few short videos or uh, looking at short videos or read new uh, you know articles you know read uh, live mint kind of newspapers where you have simplified language and then i am sure we all females are smart enough to kind of segregate what is right and what is wrong i remember on that note i actually remember one of the actress major actresses interview where she uh, you know uh, was asked a question about her you know finances and she answered in all honesty i would not even know if i can afford something or not because all my finances are managed by my father and i think that's that's the thing with a lot of us right it has been majority of majority of us so tell me about okay i i'm going to break the topic a little and tell me about how did you get into wealth management coming from and i know because i've known you for decades now and uh, that's 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 the question i want to ask and for everybody around that you come from a very very traditional family right Right. And, uh, where um, yeah, uh, family business, your brother and your father have been totally, you know, managing the business. So I really want to understand where did you get the, you know, uh, encouragement, and where did you get, find the inspiration to actually pick up something like this and not join the family business or do something which was, you know, already there. And I know you married into a, a business family, <laughs> and and I know. that you could have joined that so i really want to understand where did you land this inspiration and how did you like get into so again, it? again uh, i you rightly said i come from a very traditional family you know a baniya family uh, i am born and brought up as a jain wherein uh, you know uh, with due respect you know i have been i have born with a silver spoon uh and i've got whatever i wanted in my life uh, and i i was a pampered child but then uh, yes uh, you know uh, baniya community they have that mindset you know uh, uh, they they'll have different notions for a female or a daughter they'll have different notions for sons so uh, i was always like you know uh, ki Uh, okay let me do something that nothing was planned honestly i did my graduation from economics honors i did my post graduation in financial planning and uh, you know there was some campus interviews i was going through and i got selected and i just landed up in a mutual fund company and i just you know uh, started working for fun 
but then uh, ultimately i think life had better plans for me i'm sure i'm sure and your destiny <laughs> pulled you towards it right <laughs> and i think uh, by chance i was in a right spot uh, it was uh, sheer luck honestly and uh, the learnings i've gone through in last 14 years of my experience with icc potential aditya birla these kind of organization i think i can't thank enough to these organization the kind of uh, you know financial literacy they inculcated inside me and that's why i am more you know when i see females around myself and they telling me yaar mujhe nahi pata my father is taking care of this my brother is taking care of this. i feel exactly. so irritated you know why not you why not you exactly why don't you have the confidence you're smart <laughs> enough you can do this right it is not yes. daunting it Absolutely. is not that daunting absolutely so coming back to the money all right coming back yeah. to what wealth management is so tell me i make some money all right i'm a i'm an entrepreneur i'm or i am a you know a, a salaried person i make some money i like you mentioned i ended up saving 20% of my money now what do i do with it like where should i start investing that 20% so uh, you know first of all uh, before taking a decision where should i start investing that money 20% i should be clear that what is the purpose of this money uh, you know for how long i uh, i will not touch this money majority of the time you know we have a long term goal and two three goals which are very common with everybody is like my own retirement and exactly. uh, yeah and my kids education i think these are the two most important uh, financial goals we all have in our life apart from our short uh, you know holidays and all those things but then these are the two milestones money milestones we always talk about so if i consider you know those two milestones only uh, first important thing is start early you know do not procrastinate your investment decision even if it is a small amount i just you know take a small example uh, so for example i want 5 crores i want to retire with 5 crores kind of amount so that my lifestyle right. is maintained post that also if i start planning for that amount at the age of 50 i will have to spare 2.3 lakhs every month oh and if i start planning for the same at the age of 40 i will have to spare 58000 every month at the age of 30 the amount is 18000 and you don't believe at the age of 20 it is only 6000 so i always keep telling doesn't matter you know start small start with 1000 rupees but you should have your own savings you know which will help you in your you know kind of bad times and start early it will create a lot of difference so sip is the best route you know for for housewife uh, sip in mutual fund is the best route to, to start with that is one of the most transparent product available in india today a uh, lot of information is there on the on the google plus the regulator sebi who is the regulator of mutual fund industry is quite investor centric so you can trust yeah so sebi regulator as compared to irda uh, wherein we still have a lot of way to go uh, you know sebi is quite reliable and they always come up with you know reforms every year there are certain regulations coming up and slowly and gradually in last 12 years we have uh, in, evolved and every uh, reform is around investors right so you can trust sebi as a regulator completely i would want to sum up uh, sum it up for uh, our viewers that traditionally we've been uh, told to invest a lot in insurance which is lic uh, mostly lic for people there are a lot of other insurance uh, products out there and fds but now me has mentioned to us like we hear a lot of noise about stock market and you know mm-hmm. people making great returns crazy returns using stock market so what neha here suggest has suggested us is that you know a safer route to stock market is through sip absolutely so uh, coming on to uh, you know the mutual fund part i understand that there are a lot of uh, uh, mutual funds that charge some fund management fees correct and absolutely uh, people also talk about uh, other uh, modes of investment i i hear a lot of in- influencers and uh, 
there's a lot of noise going around like you know on gold etfs and uh, infrastructure bonds etc etc so uh, pension funds right so uh, when you talk about sip so do you, are you only uh, saying that you know a good place to start is in is sip and everything else is you know probably not important or you are trying to say that sip is the first step and then once you start allocating some money there there are other ways absolutely sip is just one step i would say uh, you know uh, asset allocation is one thing which we all talk about the you know kind of products you've mentioned we have uh, direct bonds we have unlisted shares we have corporate fds we have pms and aifs then we have uh, you know uh, in direct bonds also there are like 10 different kind of direct bonds then uh, you know you have uh, products like direct stock advisory also so if i talk about this financial universe there are you know 20 different products available out there uh, but then what is kind of suiting to me will depend what is my risk appetite what is my horizon of money what are the kind of cash flows i am having so you know gone are those days when we used to say ki you know he is 80 years old he should not take much risk he should not invest in equity trust me i have a client who's 92 years old and he is 100% into equity it all depends that a nine, if 92 year old guy is all set in his life he knows that you know my uh, kitchen is taken care of my electricity bill is taken care of i am not living in a rented house i don't have any liabilities on my head why to keep my money in bank fd and not grow that money so i will definitely take a risk at the age of 92 also and i'll keep my money 100% into equity on the other hand there's a 20 year old guy you know he has a lot of liabilities on his head he's paying emi also he has to take care of his parents also and there are 10 other things so even at the age of 20 he won't be able to take that risk to put his money into equities so okay. uh, you know uh, a uh, lot of times i have seen uh, you know since uh, you know i am here from last 14 years if you go out in the market there's a product based selling which happens so if you're meeting any uh, advisor or a financial planner or lic agent or somebody he will come up with you uh, with a proposal correct you know this is a product uh, why don't you invest your money into this without even understanding whether that product is suiting to your bucket or not so that is something which you should always avoid x product can be good for you and bad for you and vice versa also so that will be decided uh, once i will have a detailed discussion with the person i will understand the requirements i'll understand the cash flows i'll understand the liabilities and only then we can go to step 2 3 4 so sip is a good way to start because i can always start with 1000 rupees also so trust me sip is something mai apni maid ko bhi bolti hu ki yaar uh, no i am giving you x amount of salary you are this not getting have. this i am deducting 2000 every month from your salary i want you should save some money for your own retirement because uh, you know in their females are more kind of insecure they sh- it is more important for them to they have their that. own money so true so that is something that, that is something which i am trying to bring on the table so when it comes to reaching out to a wealth management firm especially from the standpoint of a of a homemaker you know what is the minimum investment that she needs to commit and how should she decide that okay i need to go to a professional and not do this myself and i am ready to you know uh, find one and how do i find one so uh, you know first of all uh, you know that statement is stuck in my mind that housewives they have scarcity of money uh, i think we all have seen demon and we have oh. seen <laughs> so i was laughing and you know i was kind of waiting you to complete and i wanted to share this you know we have seen loads of money coming out of uh, you know 10 different things uh, 10 different places in your household which we were we never thought never of never knew that there was and, but honestly yeah. I I have come. I mean, I've been using digital payment like way before the monetization happened. Okay, I'll be really honest. I I never felt it. I, and it's, it's just me. Same. It's just so me. You know, when and people I know so many asking. people felt it, but no. I never felt it because I was so comfortable with digital payments from way before. And Absolutely. I know my my house elves were all like hassled and harrowed by 
the idea so yeah, yeah. so uh, i think uh, you know uh, both of us we are kind of you know in a same boat i have also you know when demon happened the ca- cash which was there with me was around 4000 mm-hmm. and that's it and people were asking how you're going to exchange and all men ka i don't have to i hardly have you know money in cash and i been using digital payments uh, you know uh, and second i have always been uh, kind of uh, i've not never been dependent financially uh, on anyone so even i don't know what is that feeling but i've seen uh, house guys and uh, since uh, now i'm th- in this industry i've been taking sessions with women and uh, you know to my surprise uh, after the session i have seen females almost crying Uh, the kind of financial insecurity which is building inside them is like terrible you know it's okay. like kind of uh, it's hammering their everyday routine and i think worst part is uh, i have seen lot of females being into bad marriages where, or where they are not happy just because they are financially dependent they don't have any exactly. anyone to support them uh, financially so they have to be in that bad marriages also so that is the you know worst part of that so uh, this itself you know showcase how important and urgent not even important it is urgent now that uh, you know a female should start thinking of her own money her own financial planning and start asking question and start participating in family financial decisions how the, these housewives again uh, you know they can start or what is the minimum amount they need to commit when it comes to professional advice well if i if you talk about me i minimum amount is 1000 rupees every month you can invest and you can start your sip and if you talk about professional advice i find my all customers in same boat whether he is doing 1000 per month with me 1 lakh with me or 10 lakhs with me on a monthly basis so wow. i would love to reach out to all those females who wants to start even with a 1000 rupee every month and they can do wow. take that professional advice uh, so there is no minimum commitment amount honestly actually i'm really happy to uh, hear you say this that you know a professional like you with such uh, you know uh, amazing experience and credibility in the market is happy to help out anybody and everybody with something as low as 1000 a month absolutely so it would be my pleasure so another so this is now a pressing question like you know for uh, for everybody so one pressing question is how much like what is the minimum that i can come to you with and seek professional help second is that uh, what is the fees that uh, uh you know somebody can expect because these are professional services of course right so what are the fee structures or what are the models that you charge your client on what are these fixed fees there's a minimum fees that you have to pay for your services or it is a, a share on the profits or it is both a combination of both so how does that work uh, in your context and in generally in the industry what's so honestly uh, you know gunjan uh, wealth management uh, Uh, profession is still not that evolved uh, in india that we can charge a fixed fee uh, i think this model uh, was started in the market approximately 4 5 years ago uh, for a fixed fee model kind of a thing but was not very successful okay. and right i hardly know anybody who's working on a fixed fee model today uh, what uh, we get so if i talk about my earning or how a wealth management kind of on so talking of mutual funds because majority of our discussion has been around that only uh, mutual fund uh, you have an expense ratio ranging from 1% to 2% on a annualized basis okay. for equity uh, mutual fund if i talk about which covers my fee also fund management charge also operating cost allocation charges and other amc expenses so i get my fee from the company where i am investing into So I am not charging anything from the client. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So I was actually my second question was that you know a lot of these uh, fund managers uh, who are managing SIPs and and uh, you know these mutual fund companies actually charge you a percentage, which is a wealth management or a fund management fee, right? That is there. Absolutely. So I, that's the uh, question was that you know do you guys charge in addition to it? 
if somebody was to come to a waste management firm, building on this, you know, uh, that you told me, that uh, if somebody was to come to you and uh, they were to ask you, you know, what keeps you, uh, uh, your opinion independent in the sense that since you're going to get the money from the fund manager or the or the bank or, or, or whichever mutual fund company that you have associated yourself with. So you, you're getting the money. So what uh, uh, keeps you transparent and independent of your opinions? Uh, when you're suggesting your clients, like, are you going to push a certain fund or are you going to not push a certain fund, et cetera, et cetera. So, because that's that's a pretty pressing question people have that, you know, and, and that's, I think with a lot of uh, policy, uh, you know, uh, managers as well, where they're trying to sell a particular policy because they've been given a lucrative percentage to sell on it. And uh, similarly, bankers pushing a particular financial instrument because they've been given or a, or a particular bank account, type of bank account. So tell me, this is a great barrier, I feel, between a wealth management professional or, or a banker and a consumer that, you know, how do I trust that what your uh, advice is objective and independent of any biases? So I think uh, it is absolutely right question which will come to my mind if i have to hand over my money to somebody uh, my hard-earned money to somebody i would say uh, so why a person will trust me or he will have that comfort inside his head that my opinion or selection of a fund is not based on the kind of fee i'm earning at the back end right yeah. that is the question which you're trying to ask so yeah. uh, first of all you know uh, Again, reiterating mutual funds and IRDA, which we had, you know, we touched upon this topic earlier also. Uh, talking on IRDA, if I want to have insurance, please go for a pure term plan. Do not get stuck between a bundled products like endowment plans, ULIPs. They are high commission products. Uh, agent will be motivated to sell that product because uh, first year itself, the kind of commissions they are earning, like, you can't even imagine that. Wow. So, uh, you know, keep your protection part, which is insurance, and your investment separately always. Do not mix them. Do not. So, uh, you know, if I want to get a life insurance my, for myself, uh, get a term plan. If I want to get a health insurance for myself, get a medical insurance. If I want to grow my money, then invest your money in, in investable instruments like your mutual funds, your COP FDs, bonds, depending on my kind of horizon. So that is, you know, one important thing I have to keep in my mind that I don't have to mix these two things. Second thing, you need to understand what is the kind of background uh, my financial advisor is coming from. So, uh, you know, if I talk about myself, that I come from a manufacturing side of the uh, industry. Meaning, so if you talk about banker, if you talk about wealth management, currently your, you know, firms like IFL, Kotak Wealth, they all are uh, buying product from the manufacturing industry, which is mutual fund company, and then selling it to the client. So they are the brokers, you can say. I have spent my 14 years of my life into a manufacturing side of the industry where I have seen how portfolios are designed. I have worked closely with the fund manager. I have seen a you know, fund manager, how he improvised the portfolio depending on the requirement at the ground level. So since I come from that side of the industry, manufacturing side of the industry, my uh, you know first priority will always remain what is that my client is looking for, you know, because I've spent my whole life there. That is second important thing. You need to check what is the kind of experience, you know, your advisor is carrying. Third, uh, you know, uh, whatever product I am recommending to my clients, uh, we have our own skin in the game. So uh, we don't recommend, which is not a part of our own portfolio. We uh, kind of take three months to research a product or a portfolio before it comes to the recommendation list of credence investments. So the research, uh, they have, you know, 10 parameters, how to select a fund. So for example, you know, your mutual fund houses like Franklin Templeton, your DSP mutual funds, LNT mutual funds, these 
fund houses they are out of my list because i know uh, there are problems running inside these organizations since i have spent so many time in industry i know what is going inside the organization so if i know there's something which is not right in the organization that fund house is completely out of my list just forget about the you know uh, so uh, that is the kind of filtration process i have kept so you know uh, for a client he needs to understand what is the filtration criteria what are the parameters uh, you know your uh, advisor is kind of keeping before selecting a fund or keeping it as a recommended product in their bucket so uh, these are the three important things you know one they need to uh, understand the kind of experience he or she is carrying they need to understand their uh, qualification criteria what they are telling you and what they are actually practicing it so uh, you know these are the few things they need to keep in mind before uh, trusting somebody and have lot of conversation so if you have 100 rupees to to invest do not hand over the entire money at one go start with 5 10 rupees only have lot of conversations meet him like thrice or four times understand and then i'm sure you'll you you you'll understand the processes culminating this neha i think it has been a wonderful wonderful chat with you but it has been such a wonderful uh, you know conversation with you and and the fact uh, that you mentioned about two things stand out for for me personally one is that please reach out to uh, you know companies like neha's and do your research and seek professional help when you are starting your investment and wealth management journey it doesn't cost that much like she said it is just 1000 you can start with 1000 rupees as well and and you know she is there she will you know i will share her the contact details and you can reach out to her third most important thing you are not paying from your investments you are not being over you charged from your investments so there is no fee you can actually take all those years of advice all those uh, you know uh, all that experience and all of that you can benefit from all of that without spending money that's that's free professional advice and that's amazing on the closing note since this is a part of the mothers day you know uh, conversation and 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 we chose mothers day to have this conversation because we wanted to talk about things that really matter to women mothers or otherwise uh, this i i would want to tell you that i being a mother and being an entrepreneur in fact me and neha both being uh, parents and being an entrepreneur we and being a woman in business this specifically we understand your uh, insecurities about the money we understand your reservations so like she said talk research but seek professional services if you feel confident after your search that okay i have done enough research i have read enough i have seen enough videos please go and take a deep dive but if you feel you're not confident you need a professional to hand hold you and as a woman you are not confident and i'm not saying it in a very sexist way that you know men cannot be good fund managers or they cannot be good wealth and adv- investment advisors to women i'm saying this pro- purely from a you know a, a a woman the kind of comfort that i have personally experienced with neha and the kind of comfort that generally women feel with you know sharing it with another woman uh reach out uh, to her reach out to any other you know wealth management professional that you feel comfortable with because that's most important i have found my partner <laughs> and i hope you also found find a good partner but i definitely definitely want you to t- uh, want to tell you that start soon and start with the right person you i i think in your gut you will know that you are in in good hands so i think it was such a pleasure talking to you gunjan matlab can't thank you enough honestly i've been texting you this also just to uh, kind of give a closure to our entire uh, 30 minutes chat i want to summarize uh, that uh, you know be financially independent i have a, like i want to request all women out there whether they are working their house by whatever profession they are into uh be a role model for your child be a role model for your kids uh try 
and help all of us breaking this old age gender bias uh, that only a male can manage the finance. So we can only do this. So uh, please do it. And, uh, you know, just go out on as much as you want uh, because only two things are going to stay with us who are our real, you know, life partners. It is health and wealth. So, <laughs> uh, wow, <laughs> bang on, bang on. <laughs> so uh, my humble request, uh, you know, uh, we have done a lot of things in past. We as females have break a lot of stereotypes uh, in past. Let's break this one too. Let's take it up as a challenge. Absolutely, and, absolutely. So it I well. wish you the best for your goal. Thank you so much. Financial literacy to at least a thousand women this year. Oh, feeling so, so great about it. I, I, and and you know what? I am with you, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to help you in in achieving this. And uh, I hope to you know have a follow up to this chat once you once we do that, and once we you know uh, have more questions have, uh, you know, more people, women reaching out to you. I really wish we, we get that opportunity to reconnect. And for everybody out there, if you have any questions, put those questions in the comments below. I will uh, make sure that Neha reads them and is answers them to the best of her abilities. And, and obviously, she's a mother, she's an entrepreneur. The time would be a little, uh, you know, uh, difficult for her, but we will make sure that we are answering as many of your questions as we can so put down your questions in the comments and we will come back to you uh, or somebody from neha's team or neha will come back to you with all the answers thank so, you thank you neha thank bye. you have a lovely evening bye bye